Sorry about this. The son of one of the Craddock Four has been prevented from opening a criminal case over the missing docket in the matter. Lukanyo Kalata wants to open a case over that docket that disappeared from the NPA's offices some time two years ago. In 1992, an inquest into the deaths of the Craddock Four found that the apartheid security forces were responsible. Let's get more on this then. Speak to Lukanyo Kalata himself. He's joining us by Skype. I believe from Cape Town tonight, Lukanyo, good to have your time. So, when and how were you prevented from opening this case about the missing docket? Hi, good evening, uh, Tim McGill. About two weeks ago, uh, I was advised uh, to go to the uh, police station in Cape Town. Uh, and then we went to the police station to go and open a case uh, of theft as well as uh, defeating the ends of justice against the NPA. Uh, when I got there, I was uh, advised that opening a case would take, uh, I, I can open a case in Cape Town, but that it would take two to three months for that uh, case to be transferred to Johannesburg for, for that to be investigated. I then tried to inquire as to why it takes so long. I wasn't given any reason. So about last week, my lawyers in uh, Johannesburg then went to Silvertown to go try, to try and open up a case on my behalf after I had deposed an affidavit uh, in Cape Town and I had it signed by a commissioner of oaths. Uh, when the lawyers got to the Silverton uh, police station, they were told that they can't open a case uh, uh, against the NPA, that we should rather go to the uh, independent police investigating directorate. Now, as you know, IPID does not have a mandate to, uh, um, to investigate the NPA only uh, the South African Police Service has that mandate. Let me ask you this then. I was reading that there would have been an attempt on your side, or your attorneys at least, to write to both the police minister and the police commissioner. Has that indeed happened? And if so, have you had any response? Look, uh, yes, we have indeed written to both the uh, police minister as well as the office of the National Commissioner of Police. I haven't heard back from the lawyers yet as to whether or not there, ha you know, uh, there has been a response in terms of their uh, writing back and saying something about it. I'm not even sure that we've received a, a, um, a receipt uh, you know, just to say that the, both those officers have received our letter. So uh, I haven't been briefed as of yet uh, about a response coming from both the office of the minister or that of the national commissioner. And most of us, of course, only caught wind of the disappearance of the Craddock 4 docket. I think it was sometime in mid-2019 when reports began to surface. As things stand, given how the story has developed, do you believe that there's much more to this than just a pure disappearance of the docket? Of course it is, because how else would we explain it? We all know the significance of the deaths of my father and his comrades in 1985. We all know how important this case has been over the years. I think there's a lot more to it. The first being that, uh, you know, the failures of the African National Congress and the governments that it leads to have acted in a timeless manner to try and prosecute the people responsible for the murders of the Craddock Four. The second issue, Tembegele, is the fact that we live in a democratic South Africa today, but yet there are gatekeepers from the former apartheid regime that are in very key and strategic positions within uh, departments of government, and they are trying to make sure that, obviously, they, they, their friends and their former, uh, uh, you know, uh, partners in crime, in essence, aren't prosecuted uh, for the, some of the crimes that they committed under apartheid. And that's very sad because it once again, it speaks to the fact that a lot could have been done on the issue and the investigation and the prosecution of uh, the murders of the Craddock Four. But we've seen systematic failures from both the ANC and the governments that it leads in this regard. And just on that, let's speak a bit more about the people who, if the docket or the information in the docket were to re-emerge by some miracle at this stage, who would be the people who would be hauled before a court to face the music for the murder of your father and his three comrades? Dr. Magilla, in uh, 1993 or 1994, just um, 
about 18 days after President Nelson Mandela was sworn into the uh, into office, there was a uh, judgment in the second inquest into the Credo Four, and it found that there were members of the apartheid uh, uh, apparatus that were responsible for the murders of the Credo Four. So there is a judgment that points directly to members of the apartheid uh, security branches. And then what we were able then to find out through the TRC is that the murders of the Craddock Four were discussed right up and down the, 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 the chain of command within government. F.W. de Klapp, who is the former president, uh, set in on meetings of the State Security Council. There is a general, uh, well, he's now a general by the name of Joffel van der Westesen. He is the one that dictated the, 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 the military signal that called for the murders of the Craddock Four. There is a, a Eric Taylor, who is the person that actually physically committed the murder of snuffing out the, my father's life. He's still alive. Joffel van der Westen is still alive. De Klerk is still alive. So there are individuals that are still alive today that can be directly linked to the murders of the Credo Four, and, and, and those people should be prosecuted uh, I mean, as soon as Monday because, uh, unfortunately, time is no longer on our side. As you know, last week, uh, last month, Mamunyami Goniwe passed away after she, after she had waited for 35 years, uh, yet never saw any justice for the murder mm. of her husband. And you and the likes of the Goniwe's have been in this fight now for decades. When you reflect on your own, do you honestly think that 35 years later, the four families, yours and the other three, will actually ever see justice being done? We will see justice. Uh, it's, it's just a matter of time. Look, we're not going to go away, Tamagila. We are here for the long haul, right? Um, <clears throat> as long as I have breath within my body, I will continue to fight for justice for my father's life. If I don't get to achieve it, I am hoping that my son, who is only seven years old today, will find it in him to continue this battle uh, uh, for justice, because my father and his comrades, they deserve justice much like anyone else, much like anyone else, and they are due their justice, and we can't, we can't fail them. It is important that we, that we do everything that we can to make sure that justice is served for the credit for. Lukanyo Kalata, I do hope that justice is eventually served at one point. Thank you so much for speaking to us tonight.